Oh, he just went low. He's in his head. He's in his head. He's open. He's wide open. Cracked open in the face. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mario Man 2100 back again with another different-ish type video. I'm gonna go over my E3 2017 predictions. Um, I've got a bunch of notes here, so hopefully I don't ramble on too much, and I have an outline at least. So that's that's good, I guess, <laughs> for that. Um, so E3 seems like it's it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, it seems to be something that is going to be very exciting um, leading up to the event. Of course, we've got multiple games that I enjoy that are actually going to be there and, you know, things like that. So let's get through the big three because I'm not really going to go over too much else other than that. I'm not going to go over EA. Um, I'm not going to go over Ubisoft. Maybe touch on Square Enix wherever it's fine, but usually it's the big three that we're worrying about. Okay, so Microsoft. Microsoft themselves. We know that they're going to talk about Project Scorpio, whatever it is. It's next-gen console or whatever. Whatever the, the whole Project Scorpio thing is, Microsoft is going to talk about it. And for some reason, Microsoft's press conference is on a, a Sunday or something. Like... What? <laughs> when the fuck did that happen? Um, but yeah, they're going to talk about Project Scorpio, and that might be a good idea. You know, Project Scorpio might be a good thing to do for Microsoft because they, you know, they want to uh, kind of stray away f too much from the badness that was the start of the launch of the Xbox One. Um, they want to avoid that as much as possible, and rightfully so. But when it comes to Microsoft themselves, and this is even uh, segues into the next thing that I've wrote down, and the last thing that I've wrote for Microsoft is exclusives, like Sea of Thieves. Now, ultimately, I'm not sure if Sea of Thieves is just Xbox One only. Um, I'm not sure whether it's on PC as well. Um, but that's one thing that I think Microsoft need to fix up. They need to fix that. They need to make sure that they have exclusive games on the Project Scorpio so that we can give a shit about it, you know, because ultimately it's like things like PlayStation 4 Pro. Yes, those things are selling, they're not selling as much as the regular PS4 is because uh, it's not really, there isn't any really exclusive games for it. It's realistically, it's just a, um, it's just an upgrade and upgrades some games with 4K quality, which, as much as I would have bought a PlayStation 4 Pro, knowing that something like um, Kingdom Hearts 0 0.2, uh, Birth by Sleep, um, playing at 60 frames per second, um, I didn't know that <laughs> until way after I bought the game, until 1.5 and 2.5 actually came out, um, I hadn't known that it was 60 frames only with PlayStation 4 Pro, but... Ultimately, you know, Pro adds 4K resolution, and that's really about it. It doesn't really add too much, so they didn't sell too many. But that's that's the one thing that I think Microsoft needs to fix up for, not only just the Project Scorpio, because that, that's important, but Xbox One in general. Um, they need to stray away from the, oh yeah, you can play it on PC as well. I mean, that that's a nice idea, but you're selling a console. We need exclusive games for that console so that we can give a shit about it. Otherwise, we can buy these games on PC and that's about it. And you don't have to worry about the Xbox One. Just just an idea. Um, so that's it for Microsoft. We're going to go into Nintendo now. Um, and I've got a few things here. Um, first thing, 
They're briefly going to talk about Splatoon 2 and ARMS due to the tournaments that they're having for both games at E3. I'm not sure exactly when, but they're supposed to have those uh, during uh, E3 week. Um, but I'm sure there'll be probably maybe details that we will see from people playing the game, whether it's casuals or, you know, like people that have played Splatoon 1 or are new to Splatoon, you know, or new to ARMS in general. Um, the Global Test Punch is going on this weekend, I think, and was also last weekend, which was good. Um, but actually, it might have been the weekend that just went. I'm not 100% sure when I'm posting this, but um, in recording, it'll be this weekend. Um, I think that briefly, because they, ARMS is supposed to come up come out at the end of the week on the Friday of E3 week whereas Splatoon is going to be next month um, late in July so they're not really, I think they're going to touch more on Splatoon 2 than they are on ARMS but they're briefly going to mention I think both games because they really want to get through um, the rest of what they have and speaking of that they're going to talk about games that we already know like uh, Super Mario Odyssey, we know that that game's coming out um, during the holidays, most likely we're going to get a release date, unless there's a Nintendo Direct that's going to confirm that, but um, we're going to see gameplay for that, I'm sure. There's going to be a live gameplay demo booth thing at E3, um, at the Nintendo booth at uh, the E3 show floor, there's, that's going to be there. Uh, games like Fire Emblem Warriors, which is supposed to come out this year. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, which I personally believe may be delayed until next year, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see where that where that lies, because um, Monolith stuff might be on top of the game, and it might actually come out this year, which which will be good for the, for people that play that game. I, I I I've tried Xenoblade Chronicles. I haven't tried Xenoblade Chronicles X for the Wii U yet, but um, I've tried the first game, and um. I don't really like the system, like the, the RPG system that, that um, Xenoblade Chronicles had, so it's not my cup of tea, but I know that a lot of people love those games, so it's not, you know, it's not bad that those games would be coming out. Um, new games, like Metroid, F-Zero, games like that, you know, new games, you know, even from older franchises as well, maybe Mario Sports stuff... Um, I don't think we're going to get Mario Kart, that's, that's, that's already, only just realistically came out last month, so that's, well, actually in April, late April, so it's not really, they're not really going to talk about a Mario Kart yet. Um, if they have a new Mario Kart on the Switch, then that'll be a couple of years down the line. And the last big one that I want to talk about is Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo Switch. Now... A lot of people have been debating for at least 6, 9, 12, how long the, the NX has been announced, now known as the Nintendo Switch, um, that Smash was going to get ported on there, or, you know, Smash Smash is going to be on the Switch, no doubt, but um, when it comes to Super Smash Bros. in general, if it's a port of Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, which I think some of the stuff, if not all of it, from the 3DS version, all the content that was separate on the 3DS version and all the content on the Wii U version will be put into a port. It will get announced this year, but I'm going to be the Debbie Downer and say that it's not going to get released this year, but will be released next year. Um, only reason that I say that, and I've said this a, a few times to a few of my friends and that sort of thing, is that the problem with Nintendo and, and Smash Brothers is that they don't want to oversaturate um, their lineup for this year. And realistically, Smash Brothers is a big sale, um, a big seller for Nintendo. But the problem is, is putting where exactly you're going to put it this year? Because realistically, as I've said, this the Friday of E3 week is Arms. The month after that is Splatoon 2. Now, they don't want to put it too close to Splatoon, because even though Splatoon 1 on the Wii U was one of the best sellers, you know, Smash and Splatoon selling at the same time, Smash is going to outnumber Splatoon. I am sorry to people that love Splatoon, but there's a lot of people that love Smash Brothers. 
and I can just see it being oversaturated. Now, of course, we do have a big gap between the release of Splatoon 2 and excuse me, uh, Splatoon 2 and Super Mario Odyssey. We have a big gap between both of those games. Um, I think it's about like four months because I will say late November, early December is when um, Super Mario Odyssey is going to come out so that it's out by the holiday season. Um, one of the big problems that I see with that is where they're going to put it and I think that Fire Emblem Warriors will be out in around about September, October time. So, particularly, yeah. Um, excuse me. Sorry, this. Sorry about the background noise. There's a dog in my bloody front yard, which isn't my dog. It's deciding that it wanted to pee in my fucking front yard. Um, but yeah, it's 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 going to be hard um, to see where Smash is going to lie, and especially if Xenoblade Chronicles Two gets announced um, for this year specifically, like. If that if that's also coming out this year, then there's absolutely no chance that Smash is going to come out this year because it will overshadow everything. And of course, they wouldn't want to put it uh, as much as Smash during the holiday season would be great. We've already got Smash Four <laughs> on Wii U and 3DS. We don't really need to go over that. So I think that it will be announced if it's if it's a port, it will be announced at this E3, but release next year. I don't know when, you know, the only thing that we really know about the Switch for next year that is Nintendo itself is, I think, the Fire Emblem game that's supposed to come out next year, but when is that going to come out, we don't know. <laughs> um, but what I will say, if it's an all-new game, like a new, like Smash 5 or what, whatever the new Smash Brothers game is going to be called, it won't get announced at E3. If it's an all-new game with new content and all that type of stuff, you know, like, from the ground up, it's, you know, built from the ground up and, you know, that sort of thing, it's not going to get announced this year. But if it's a port, which most likely will be the case, I think 90%, um, then it will get announced, but will be releasing next year. Um, what I also would like to say is that with new games for Nintendo, Virtual Console. I know that's more older games, but Virtual Console, please, for the love of God, <laughs> Nintendo, you need to talk about Virtual Console, considering that you've also got to talk about the paid subscription service for the Nintendo Switch for online sometime before fall, or fall over in the States and the Northern Hemisphere, because down here it'll be springtime, so September, that sort of thing. Excuse me, Jesus, that was disgusting. Um, but yeah, they need to talk about Virtual Console. GameCube Virtual Console, please, for the love of God. You know, like, as much as I like GameCube games, I hate the price tag for them online, because they're like, at least 60 bucks. They're like, they're more expensive than a new Nintendo Switch game right now. Like, some of the Nintendo Switch games are like 60, 70 bucks. GameCube games can go anywhere from like 80, depending on how rare it is, and like most common games are about 80, 90 bucks, all the way up to about 150 for more rarer games. Um, so yeah, please, GameCube Virtual Console, like I would buy, if you put on like Double Dash, um, Smash Melee, as much as so many people would want that, you know, that, that's the game, F-Zero GX, like, games like that, perfectly fine. Yeah, perfectly, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what else I was trying to think, but yeah, GameCube, like, like virtual console games, GameCube, it's more, of course we're going to have NES and Super NES, because that's part of the subscription service that they announced a while back, but, um, yeah, so that's it for Nintendo. Now we can go into Sony. And it's the last of the big three, but I think Nintendo, I think, goes last for their Nintendo Spotlight. So, um, I think Sony's beforehand. So with Sony, new exclusives. I don't, I don't care what the ideas are based on, just new exclusives. Some things that, you know, we haven't seen before. Um, that'd be nice, you know, as much as, like, 
stuff like Days Gone and that sort of thing are not really my taste. Games like Last of Us 2 or, or Uncharted or Lost Legacy, and, you know, like new new games like that, that's great. You know, like more new games. We we can't have a problem with more new games. Like that that's that's always a good thing. Um and speaking of those other games, updates on announced games already that have been already been announced. Games like Last of Us 2, Uncharted, I'm sure we'll get more news on. And like Days Gone, even though I'm not really interested. God of War 4, whatever that is called. Dad of War, <laughs> to natively nicknamed because of um, the kid. Um, Final Fantasy 7 Remake or Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, that's, that's my square... Um, <laughs> that's the square part of me and my my mind and my heart that is saying either Final Fantasy VII Remake or Kingdom Hearts 3 or both, you know, I wouldn't mind a trailer for both of them, like, uh, I just think that personally, I hope Kingdom Hearts 3 gets a release window, maybe a release year, um, than Final Fantasy VII, because it's supposed to be coming out within the next three years, both of those games, I will, I will say. Because so many people are so confused. It's like, oh yeah, these games won't be released until after 2020. It's like, no, that's that's not what they said. It's within, th within those three years or so, depending. And I'm sure that's they're, they're going or so just in case for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Because we know that game is going to be episodic or like in parts. Um... I love the naming convention that if they go with something like a classic name like Final Fantasy VII Remake Disc 1, which is Part 1, and then like Disc 2, just for a little a little wink and nod to the old Final Fantasy VII players, because it's just like, oh yeah, it was on like three or four separate discs. <laughs> so if they put it in parts and they call it that, that, that would, I would... I would be like, yeah, that's that's a cool idea. That's like, I like that. That's 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 a nice nod. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that is as much as I would like. You know, get more updates on already announced games. That that'd be great. And the last thing that I wrote down here, and these are based on rumors that have happened in the last couple of months. Sony will not announce a new next gen console. No PlayStation Five or whatever it's called. I don't think that they're going to jump ship to the newest PlayStation console because the PlayStation 4 is still selling like hotcakes. Like, it may not be selling, maybe, it might be selling around about as many Switches as it is now. Like, like the Switch has only just come out and the sales have been great and the PS4s have been selling either just as well, a bit more or a bit less. It doesn't matter, they're still a lot of PS4s out there, whether it's the PlayStation 4 itself, the Slim model, which I've got, PlayStation 4 Pros, you know, like, all that type of stuff. You know, I don't think they're going to jump ship to PlayStation 5, I don't think that's that's a, that's a decision that they're going to make. Um, so I don't think that there is going to be a new next-gen console that will be announced. There will most likely be more um, PlayStation VR games that they will talk about, because Trust me, people are going to talk about uh, VR projects all the time. Um, where is that Final Fantasy XV VR game that was supposed to be, or VR experience game that was supposed to happen? Like, what the? Where did that thing go? <laughs> like, that's just one thing on like about like five or six different levels. It's like, where's this game? Where's this game? Where's this experience? Uh, you know, there's, like, things that have been lost to the void. Um, but, yeah, you know, I just... I don't think that they're going to jump ship to a PlayStation 5 or that sort of thing just yet, because I think the PlayStation 4 only came out in, what, 2013? So, realistically, I don't think that they're going to, you know, do it so soon. Maybe 28, like, 2019 or 2020, you know, that, that would make sense, because it would be, like, a full generation... And, you know, the Switch would be out for a couple of years. You'd have a couple of years to develop a console. And there you go. <laughs> if, if that's the way that they want to go. I, I don't think it will be announced this year, though. Um, I don't think they're going to jump ship just yet. Because PlayStation 4 is doing just fine. Xbox One, if Microsoft had a new next-gen console, like, the Scorpio is apparently their next new console. 
like, and I mean, like, not the Xbox One, but the um, successor to the Xbox One, like the 360 was for the original Xbox. You know that that'd be that be. I I would admit they would jump ship before I think Sony would because of the sales of the Xbox One, but I don't think that Sony are gonna do it just yet. So yeah, that's my E3 2017 predictions. There's no real cloud in the sky. Like, the only real cloud in the sky that I can think of is, like, a new F-Zero game, a new Metro, like, a new F-Zero and Metro get announced among massive amount of, like, Nintendo games. Smash comes out this year. Uh, like, that that would be a pipe dream, but I, I don't think... And then for, like, Sony, oh, yeah, we actually get a release date for, for Kingdom Hearts 3 and, and that sort of thing, like, an actual full-on date rather than a released year. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like a date solid like the 27th of like September 2018 or something like that, you know? Something to that effect, you know? And I think most of those things would be a pipe dream um, for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, you know, those are my E3 2017 predictions. It looks like it's going to be a good show this year. I think we're going to get what games like uh, we got the new Call of Duty, World War Two, we've got games like Star Wars Battlefront Two, and I mean I should say EA Battlefront Two because Battlefront Star Wars Battlefront Two already exists before EA even touched it. I I don't even know why they call it that. Why did they call it that? They could have just said like EA. Like, Star Wars Battlefront subtitle. There would be no one that would be confused about it. Like, it's just like, oh yeah, it's Star Wars Battlefront 2. Again. You know, you're just confusing people. You know, I think we'll get details on Destiny 2 and Last of Us 2 and all that type of stuff. So, thank you guys so much for watching this kind of stupid video. I, I say kind of stupid because it's just like, it's just me talking about my predictions and a lot of people would be like what is this dickhead doing um but those are my predictions you know like ultimately if i'm wrong then i'm wrong but if i'm right with most of those then i'll won't lose sleep over it you know like if i'm wrong i won't lose sleep over it but if i'm right you know that's that's perfectly fine i'll be happy with that and whatever new new surprises are on the horizon from Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, I won't mind, you know, and many other companies like Bethesda and Square Enix and that sort of thing. Um, but hey, that, that Sonic Mania trailer, god damn, that was a good trailer. Still bummed out that it's, the game's out in August though, but hey, it comes out this year, that's, that's good, that's good. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been Mario Man 10100. You guys have a great day and night, and of course, take care. Go the New South Wales Blues! I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> so many people are gonna fucking call shit on that.